We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today we have a very special guest. I know I've mentioned it before that we were going to have him on, but with things going on in the world, it's been a little bit difficult coordinating schedules. But here we have Eric Wind of Wind Vintage, one of the uh, the most premier vintage watch museum grade watch dealers, collectors, and commentary really thank you so much how are you great how about you excellent great to have you on the show and so what we're going to do is something very interesting you know that i love vintage watches obviously it's pretty clear that he does as well if you don't know him by the way feel free to give him a google check out his website wind vintage for museum grade pieces but we've got a little bit of a collection here that you brought so why don't we talk a little bit about uh, what you have here and a little bit about your background as well for those that are unfamiliar with you sure well i run Wind Vintage, which is, uh, I buy and sell high quality watches, museum grade, as he said, which I, <laughs> it I is like. true. I might have to adopt that. <laughs> but uh, prior to that, I worked for Christie's for a few years and was a contributor to Hodinkee for many years before that. Excellent, excellent. Early days. Some of so. his articles are great, actually, in their back catalog of Hodinkee as well, so I would check them out. So. Why don't you show us some of the special pieces yeah. that you've brought with you? I know whenever I stop by, he always has these interesting things. It's kind of like the Indiana Jones of the vintage watch <laughs> industry. He pulls out these things that were in wars and yeah. have seen... Interesting stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Um, well, these are just a few watches that I really like from my personal collection. Oh, wow. I thought would be fun to show. Um, the first is a Rolex of Mariner reference 5512. Mm -hmm. This one has what's called the neat font style, kind of an unusual dial, the way the superlative chronometer officially certified text lines up. Um, just spectacular condition with, you know, the beautiful original chamfered edges. And when I got into vintage watches, it was one of the watches I really wanted to own. Wow, this is beautiful. Um, and that one's from about 1967. And once again, the condition on this is Immaculate. It's seen. It's it's, it's probably seen a polish, no, but never, never seen a yes, polish. Yeah. <laughs> Always with Eric, he has these watches that have barely seen the light of day. Yeah, yeah. It's I love really this. Really nice condition, um, and just for me, almost like a one watch scenario. If you're going to have one watch, I love the Submariner. Um, it's just, uh, just beautiful a piece. Beautiful piece. What else do we we have here to show um, the audience? I really love 1940s chronographs. It's one really? of my areas of sort of interest and expertise, just everything that was going on in the world back then, of course, um, and the fact these were kind of the first water-resistant chronographs and really interesting time for aviation. Um, this is a Galley clamshell. Clamshell? From the early 1940s. So that system had four screws to connect the case back to the case. And it has a beautiful... The dial is unbelievable on it this. It is. It's crazy. You cannot find a Galley chronograph on the internet <laughs> with a dial this immaculate. Pretty, there, there will absolutely yeah, be a video yeah. here of this. It's a beautiful black and gray dial and, you know, one of those forever watches, I think. Very interesting. Is this on Wind Vintage or...? Um, this is a keeper, of course, but I posted right. it on my Instagram before Beautiful. Too. Beautiful. Yeah. And unpolished as well. Um, this was just something I picked up recently um, last summer on eBay and one of those things where it had a very scratched up crystal with some crazing but in horrible photos but I thought it was maybe gonna be a good one and it turned out to have one of the most beautiful dials I've seen kind of a pinkish orange dial and I do love dial. the contrast with the blue uh, alarm marker yeah. on the inner dial yeah that's beautiful just an incredible watch. It, uh, the patina is even on the dial as well, the aging. Yeah. Yep. Unpolished case as well. Memovox reference E850 from 1955. Very nice example. Thank you. And just a really fun watch to wear. It's just, just a beautiful thing. And Memovox is, wouldn't you recommend perhaps a, you know, a Memovox or a vintage alarm for someone looking to get into vintage and yes. maybe not, you know, the Rolex Submariner yeah. price point yes. or yeah. something I love, like that? I love all vintage alarm watches. They're pretty mechanically sound, really cool complication because you'll surprise people. When it's time for you to wake up in the morning, do you just have a bunch of crickets <laughs> and uh, uh, Memovox going yes, off in yeah, your house? Yeah. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> One is enough. One is enough. One is but enough. That's good. Excellent. Well, what do we have next? This is just a pocket watch I also got last year. 
Um, but Rolex pocket watch. But it's a Rolex, but with an incredible sector dial, uh, which is this kind of design, no numbers anywhere, uh, which I love, just lines, really interesting 1930s design. That came out of Canada. That was an eBay find, um, nine karat gold and just spectacular silver dial. So, so I, I think there, we, ha we have to mention this because something that, I mean, first of all, beautiful watch, amazing condition, excellent dial, obviously a very rare pocket watch example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but touching on eBay, because I have to mention this because yes, I talk please. about this in my channel all the yeah. time and other watch YouTubers as well. When getting into vintage watch eBay, it's a wild, well, let's it's keep in mind we're West. talking to someone that yeah. uh, was the head yeah. of the watch department at Christie's yeah. and you know curates collections that are millions of dollars for vintage yeah. watches. So you know not everything can be treated the same on eBay. Of course, civilians uh, can get hurt badly on eBay, as I say, civilians. Even professionals too, right? Yeah, you take yeah. a risk and there's chances there, but you this do. is you just have just to give beautiful. that disclaimer. I think that's a good disclaimer. Very nice watch, and we have something else. Yes, a. Uh, Hoyer chronograph, um, probably reference 2406, uh, and it's from the around 1940, 1941, and uh, just an incredible example of a beautiful 1940s chronograph. Also a silver dial, and you know it has on a gay frere bracelet. It belongs in a museum. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a spectacular watch. And One these, of my favorite watch. And these bracelets are actually becoming increasingly more scarce on the market, right? They are, and they're moving up in value a lot. Just the bracelet alone, where would you... Because I think some I, of these I nuances... I was offered for that bracelet. Just the bracelet I was offered $10,000 for about five years ago. Right. It's it's yeah. For the person that needs the bracelet for that particular special yeah. watch... You can't find them. There's no prices for them. Yes, yeah. Once again, another beautiful example. And lastly, what is on the wrist? This is a fun watch as well. I found from a collector via Instagram, actually a Seiko golf watch. Um, and is this more approachable or? Yes, yes. That was, I paid under $2,000 for that. Um, but it's got a case very similar to a Patek Philippe 565, which is one of my favorite references. Got a really interesting dial and case back with the dimple design. Continues to the case back from the front. Just an unusual, very rare watch. Um, I, I love some of the vintage Seiko models that are out there and have a few in my collection. So I thought I would throw Seiko in the mix. Very beautiful watch, very interesting. I know when we talk about approachability, um, you know, the $2,000 price point m might not be there for everyone, but we're talking about something that could potentially go up in value. Not that I, I preach in investments in watches, but certainly, you know, when you buy something of this quality, you're not necessarily going to be, you know, yeah. taking a hit. So something to consider yeah. Yeah. as well in terms of sure. um, approachability when we're talking about vintage, a little bit different. Would you say that maybe there's kind of any main differences when talking about watches like this compared to contemporary or modern Rolex, things like that? Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is these are much harder to find in good condition. You can buy any modern Rolex anywhere at any time. And if someone said, go find an unpolished 5512 from the 1960s, it could take two to three years realistically to find that. It's not incredibly expensive, it's just very hard to find. So people, I think, don't realize that. and. People come to me all, all the time like, okay, I want to buy a Paul Newman Daytona. I'm like, okay, get here in line behind a lot of people, one. And two, they're not, like, you can't just decide to buy it. It's like not that common in the market um, in good condition. And if you do find one, right, and, they don't, and you don't go to someone that has the connections to find a great example, you're going to pay a great example price for a not great example. Typically, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, we'll talk maybe more about it in the future, have you come yeah. on and share some of these kind of insider tips, secrets, yeah. talk about more like collector grade museum yeah. quality. Yeah. I'm coining that term. I if like I see that, that on your I website, I'm gonna, grade <laughs> <laughs> museum grade <laughs> watches. Well, thank you for coming in um, and showing me these pieces. Very cool watches. I know you have so many more. If you guys out there would love to see more of these watches, other watches that he has, as well as hear more about kind of the ultra high-end vintage watch community. I know he also has so many uh, stories about um, 
you know, working with different celebrities and notable people. I don't know how much of that you'd be willing to share, but nonetheless, I'm sure with that comes very special watches, which of course, I'm sure that you'd be glad to share. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Excellent. Well, once again, thanks for coming in. Guys, you can check out Eric, Eric Wind on Instagram. I think, why don't Eric you tell M. them? Eric M. Wind on Instagram with my middle initial in there. Eric Wind was taken when I signed up for Instagram uh, eight years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> Eric M. Wind and your website? windvintage.com. Perfect. Check him out there and you know where to find me, delraywatch.com. Thanks guys. You've been chatting with John P and Eric Wind. Thank you. Ciao.